Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Memory Work Ideas for CC Cycle 2 and Week 3. This week we are skip counting the fives and the sixes. So for the fives, we are going to be in a circle and we'll take turns one at a time going around the circle and giving everyone a high five as we skip count the fives. So we'll be high fiving every new five. You could also do that standing in a line, just fill out whatever works better uh, for your setting. But high fives is what we're doing for the fives. For the sixes, we sing this to the tune of Three Blind Mice, and so we are going to use our very best squeaky mouse voices, and we're going to start out in a whisper, and then we're going to get louder as we get through the skip counting of the sixes, and then by the fifth, sixth, or seventh time around, I'm assuming that our class will have it down by then. I have the Abecedarians this year, so they may not all be able to read all these numbers through 90 anyways, but what we're going to do is by the fifth or sixth time, we'll start doing it blindfolded like three blind mice, and uh, that is the plan for math. For English, we're learning the pronoun order, and for pronoun order, uh, the key to remember that we're trying to grasp through all of these, even when we get into Latin, singular, and plurals, is that the first person's referring to I, or me, right? Uh, second person is you, and the third person is them or they. So when we do the pronoun order this week, we will introduce it with those motions so that in our mind we can also relate it to what we're talking about as we get into the Latin uh, singular and plurals too. So we do it like this with motions and kind of a tune. So it's first person singular, second person singular, third person singular. This is the pr pronoun order. And then for plural, we'll use two hands. So first person plural, second person plural, third person plural. This is the pronoun order. And that's how we'll do English. And for history, we're learning about the Crusades. So we are going to do a little bit of acting out using some uh, props, or you could use fake props if you don't want to use real props. Keep it very stick in the sand. You could just do motions for some of these things. But I'm going to present it with my little uh, crown here for King Richard, right? And so uh, we'll have our crown on, and then we'll do these motions with it. So Richard the Lionhearted, we're going to just act like we're making a lion face and being really bold and courageous because that's what he was known for, is his courage in battle. So Richard the Lionhearted, son of Eleanor, when we do that, we're going to do like we're rocking a baby. And then he fought the Turks. So what we're going to do when we say that part is we're going to move like we're using a sword to fight. If you have a sword at home, you could bring that, that little play sword, or you could just do the motions. And then when we say crusades, we're going to move our hands forward in a cross shape like the crusade, the symbol for the crusades. And then when we do from 1095 to 1291, we'll kind of make our timeline and we'll say 1095 to 1291. So we're moving down the time timeline. So all together, that is Richard the Lionhearted, son, when we say son of Eleanor, then fought the Turks, then during the time of the Crusades, we'll do that from 1095 to 1291. And those will be our motions as we listen to the song for, listen to and sing the song for history this week. And then we have Latin. For Latin, we are learning the first conjugation endings for imperfect tense. And for that, we are going to pretend like there's a bomb exploding with our hands because a bomb exploding makes everything imperfect and we're learning the imperfect tense. So we're going to pretend like we are making the bomb motion and we're going to do it in the same pattern as we did for English for the first person, second person, and third person. So it'll go bomb, bas, bunt, bombus, patus, bunt, and we'll go through that motion as we say each one. So bomb, bas, bunt, bombus, patus, bunt. All right, that is Latin. For geography, we are going to use our handy dandy pointer eyeballs, and we're going to point to all these Western European countries with our eyeballs, 
as we sing it to the tune of London Bridges. The London Bridges tune came from uh, Cece Happy Mom on YouTube, and I'll link her video below so you can check that out. But I thought it was perfectly fitting for these countries being to the song to the London Bridges tune. So it sounds like this. Ireland, England, Portugal, 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 Ireland, England, Portugal, Spain, and France. And that's what we'll do as we learn our Western European countries this week. For science, we have what are three types of consumers? So there's a couple ways that you could do this that I think both would be fun. The stick in the sand method would just be to do hand motions. So you would do herbivore, carnivore, like your fist is meat, and carnivore, and then omnivore. Okay, or you could use colored paper or foam pads. I happen to have foam pads and so on. Herbivore, carnivore, omnivore. And that way you can see that omnivore eats both the grass and the meat together. And then on my board, I'll have a picture of grass next to herbivore, meat next to carnivore, and then next to omnivore, we'll have both. And that's how we'll do science. For review this week, we're going to use the game Inchworm. This is one of my favorite games to play with the littles. Uh, it's perfect for my class and my kids this age when playing any kind of review work. You pull these little inchworms out and as you can see they have the different color cording, color uh, pieces to their body and as you pull it out we'll just say whichever color we land on when we spin uh, that'll be the color that we are going to review and I'll just put in subjects for each of these colors. As they spin we'll do the review question and then they'll get to pull out their inchworm to that color. I got this game I think at Walmart. You might be able to get it at Target too. I'll have to check and confirm that. But you have land and you pull out your inchworm to the color you spin to. And then if you don't reach that color, you get to pull out the whole inchworm. And then all the inchworms that you collect that you've pulled out, you attach. And then at the end of the game, you see who has the longest inchworm. It's pretty fun for the littles. And so we will use that for a review this year. I know that's a little bit extra having a game, but sometimes it's fun to use board games and different side things as you're reviewing uh, just to add a little extra fun. But that's what we're going to do this week for week three. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you again for week four.